feeling overworked, overwhelmed, and spread too thin, then you need to listen up because I've also got solutions for you. I'm going to kick off today talking about the different ways you can spread yourself too thin and the problems with that. And then I'm going to give you three solutions that you can start to implement right away into your life so that you're feeling a little bit more energetic, a little bit more like you can handle things and that you have a little bit of peace and quiet for yourself because you're not expected to be everywhere for everyone. And so, you know, I could start talking about superhero or superwoman syndrome, talk about that quite a bit in some of my webinars and my business success events. But today I want to focus on just this idea of having too much on your plate or too many plates spinning, right? Spinning at the same time that you feel overworked. You feel like you're on your way to burnout or you're maybe already burnt out and you don't have an emotional bandwidth or emotional stamina to be able to deal with everything that's happening. So I've seen this in a few clients at different times. One client who was just so mad that the sun was setting at 536 and she was angry about it. And I was shocked and I was like, what is going on? Like, it's not normal to be this mad about the sun setting at 530. And so what it meant for her was that she couldn't go out and run in the sunlight. And it was changing the way she was living her life in the evenings, which was the only kind of downtime she had. And she was just flat out working. And so even when the sun was setting at seven, she was not getting home from work till after seven, close to eight. And so it meant that she didn't have time for herself. She was stressed. And maybe you're feeling this as well, right? You're feeling stressed. You feel like I just can't handle one more thing. There's a straw that broke the camel's back. Something might happen that becomes too much. And then if you get to the point of actually being sick, like who's going to pick up all the things that you do? Now, I often see this in clients that I'm working with, and maybe you can relate in that you're a high achiever or you're driven or you're a type and you're a leader and you're really good at what you do and you have high success. What happens is so many people come to us, people like this, to have us do more. And so have you felt that? Have you felt that, wow, I'm always being asked to help. And the thing is that you probably can get a lot done and that's why, or you feel like you're volunteering, right? volunteering for more things. And so either you have placed a lot on your schedule. And I understand that it's, it's a privilege to be able to choose what your schedule is like. And maybe you are the type that's like, financially, I have to work long hours. And it's not that I'm just pushing papers around like I'm actually at a nine to five or I'm working and I'm going to school at the same time, or I'm a single parent. And so it's me and only me, but there are still some things that you can do to stop yourself from spreading so thin that you're very frail and ready to break. So this can also be the situation you've seen a lot of people frail these days. A lot of people in lineups freaking out, especially with customer service, like being super rude to people. I've seen it on the streets when people are driving. People are not able to handle things and their filter, the filter of kind of putting yourself in the right place and having manners is going really thin. But my bigger concern here is that you're depleting yourself to the point of anxiety, depression, and then stress-induced illnesses, adrenal fatigue. Maybe you, the anxiety is revving up your blood pressure. I would hate for there to be longer lasting ailments for you because of that stress. So let me go into three solutions that you can do They don't cost you any money. They don't cost you any time. There's no big process to doing them. I can go deeper with each of them, but I want to make sure that you have this tool set that you can use it at any point. So number one, listen to your gut. So when you get asked to do something or when there's an opportunity at, you know, in in an invitation, in an email or in front of you, 
or you see the chance to be able to, oh, I could do that in my business. I could start that. I could launch that. I want you to check in with your gut, your stomach, the intuition that basically is going to tell you, yeah, let's do it. Or uh, no, no. (laughs) And I get that sometimes it's a limiting belief voice that you're going to hear that says, no, no, don't do that because it's too much or I'm not confident enough for that or I don't have the right qualifications. And so, of course, you're listening to make sure it's not your limiting beliefs. But a lot of times when I open my emails and I get an invitation to come and speak at an event or to do a collaboration with someone or to have someone speak on my podcast, I look at it and I read it and then I like, it's either an instant, like, hell yeah, let's do this. Let's make this happen. And I'm excited and I'm responding or it's a kind of a brain place of, I need to think about this or I need more information before I can decide, but I'm interested or it's a, mm, I don't know. And that lack of energy, that void of energy is telling you that if you do do this, there is a chance that it's going to deplete your energy. Because if you're not in resonance, resonance being the energy and alignment, if you're not in that place, it's going to take energy to do it. So think right now, have you ever, have you ever said yes to something or done something, took on some goal and then realized later, it was the wrong decision. And you know, that feeling of like, oh, bad energy. Like I'm not liking this. This feels so hard. I don't want to do this. So if you trust your gut decision in the beginning, you can make a better decision on what you're putting on your plate. Because if you think of going to a buffet, think of like the most, your most favorite type of buffet. Maybe it is a Chinese food buffet. Maybe it is like more Mexican. Maybe it's like a party with all appetizer. Maybe it's a potluck um, with your local church group or your family. Uh, Maybe it's a wedding. So think of your most favorite buffet and then your favorite food on there. I know for me, oftentimes a certain restaurants, they have crab legs. And so for me, I'm like, I got to save room for crab legs. And so I often go first to the crab legs or first to the specific sushi that I like in order to make sure I have room on my plate. And what happens when my plate is full? Maybe I shove a little bit more on where I know I can come back. But the thing is, you only have so much space on your plate, just like you have only so much space in your life. And you want everything on your plate to be a hell yeah. You don't want to put something on your plate from that buffet that you're like, "Mm, I don't really like that. So if like, I, I am not a parsley fan. There's so many things in my world that I eat, but I think it's tabbouleh salad is made with parsley and I love everything else in it. If it was made with cilantro, I'd be all over it, but it's parsley. And I don't want to get any hate emails about, (laughs) about you don't like, I can't believe I don't like parsley, but Uh, but I like cilantro. I don't want to go into that. But anyway, you can imagine if I was like to get a massive scoop of that tabbouleh salad and put it on my plate, like it's going to be hard to eat that. And key thing is what did now that now take the space away from? Think about that. Okay. So everything you put on your plan in your life should be a hell yeah. So listen to your gut. When you listen to your gut and you know what the decision is, if the decision is no, say no and mean it. This is number two, say no and mean it. If no is not a complete answer for you and you need to say more, don't apologize. Just focus on other priorities. So it's easier to say yes to something else and then say no to that. And so if it is uh, another board, you're already on some boards, you could say, you know, thank you for inviting me. I'm already on two boards and that's my like quota for boards this year. Okay. Easy. If you want to give a reason and you want to keep it more generic, you could say, I'm sorry, it doesn't fit into uh, my life right now. Really wish I could, you know, that's something you can say. So say no and mean it is the second thing you can do. And the last thing that you can do, number three, that will stop you from spreading yourself so thin is to actually take some time for you. 
take some me time. And what I'm finding in myself and my clients is that the start of the day is the perfect time. So waking up early or just the first thing of your day to do your journaling, your meditation, your visioning, your prayers, whatever it is for you, your exercising, do that at the start of the day so that it's there for you to set the foundation for the rest of the day and maybe the craziness of the day. And if you have to take me time on your lunch hour because you work a nine to five and you're crazy busy in the morning, that's fine. Go for a walk. Again, listen to a podcast or just sit and meditate and relax and do nothing if that is what fills you up. It's a kind of a counterbalancing thing. Over here, you're going to work really hard. Then you need to have a break to fill and recharge yourself. So I hope that you will stop spreading yourself so thin by listening to your gut, saying no and meaning it, and taking me time. Did you know that? How to stop spreading yourself so thin or the benefit of knowing how to and actually putting it into play is one of the benefits of my dynamic success accelerator program. Because when you have super clear focus on what you're working on, the confidence to go for it and a very clear action plan, you stop spreading yourself thin because the only things that you're putting on your plate are the things that you absolutely love. Of course, there might be a few little things sprinkled in there. You know, maybe you're not a broccoli fan, but you know you need your vegetables. And so that might be taxes for you, or that might be seeing family you don't want to see, but it, it keeps the peace. So there might be a few things sprinkled in there, but you know how to handle it. And there's more space and it feels so much better. And so that's the benefit of having a plan. See, a lot of people have business plans, but they don't have life plans. And so in this program, you're going to walk out with a life plan as well as where to focus on in your business so that you don't spread yourself thin. Instead, you start to find pockets of time. You get to get into things you love again. And I know that some, some people in hearing this, maybe you're going to hear this, think this too, is that, oh my goodness, I don't even know what I want. Don't worry. Don't worry. We cover what you want, what you need, what your priorities, all of that. I've got specific processes that are proven to get you to the answers that you need. Let me walk you through it. You can find the link to check it out and see more information. And make sure you look at all the amazing bonuses that are included. Things like being a published author with me in one of the Dynamic Women series books. And so many other benefits, so many other benefits for you to not just do life and business by yourself, but to come together with other amazing, high achieving and driven and successful dynamic women like you. So check it out.